Hello everybody, here we are at NZ Universe and today I'm talking with Alan Edwards, a performance analyst at Natiza. Hello Alan. Morning. Alan, what I'd like to talk a little bit about is uh, different types of workloads on computer systems and typically that we sort of see two major classes. We see transactional workloads and we see analytic workloads. Could you just help us by sort of comparing and contrasting those two different workloads? Right, surely. So conventionally transactional processing has existed for a long time and the architectural requirements for that are very different from analytic workloads. So uh, OLTP workloads, online transaction processing, tend to be very prescribed. So particularly if you're running your business, it's not ad hoc, it's, it's coded, it's codified, it's tested, and sort of hard coded and locked into the code. That tends to be very short, selective, discrete operations. Yeah. And structurally and architecturally for a system to deal with that, you tend to have shared data structures. Right, so a conventional database system will have a whole shared architecture, shared memory, you'll read data into it so that everybody can benefit um, because they're all doing many of the same small, simple, concise operations. And, and the transactions are designed to be as short and discreet and tuned as possible and predictable. Because they're, they're, it's very predictable. We know, we understand the business. We're selling shoes or we're, we're putting money in and out of a bank account. We understand right, exactly, the business. Exactly right. And so, uh, in order to support that, so even if you have a huge database underneath that, to make that very selective, and it's a, sort of the selective nature and the repetitive nature of, of that operation. You use shared structures and, and you use indexes and that sort of thing to make it very discrete, selective, easy to get to. Right. And, and, and those are very powerful because they, you can take a lot of data and index it and get to a row or a, a small subset of rows very, very quickly because you traverse by doing small sequential operations. You right. traverse this index. And, yeah. but, but that introduces overhead in many forms. One, it's a, it's a separate storage of the data and it's processing to sort it and sort of build that thing. But also there's, there, there are structures to protect that. So uh, in many systems there are latches and locks and things so that no two people can change it to different values right. at the same time to right. you know, manage integrity and so forth. Yeah. So, so the shared architecture components are, are absolutely essential for OLTP, but if you want to do large decision support in analytics, that's very different in many ways. And the shared, first of all, the shared structures get in the way. Right. Because they create contention and, and in large volume analytics and decision support, you need parallelism, right? right? And, and so what you see in more and more systems, and you certainly see this in Atiza, is sort of less and less sharing. And in fact, we do sort of a shared nothing architecture right. so that you can divide and conquer and have as little overhead um, and contention as possible. And right. so another thing that's important is that the indexing structures and the selectivity uh, improving structures that we talked about for OLTP absolutely get in the way for decision support in analytics because in analytics, an analytic workload tends to touch a lot of the data, not just some minor subset. Yeah, we want to know, you know all the shoes that were sold last season and does that represent a trend that we can take advantage of next season, for right. instance. Right, and, and you uh, access that data in bulk, right? So. Right. Uh, going through shared structures and the contention and the, the selective access stuff, that does it a small piece at a time sequentially. That doesn't lend itself to volume processing. So a structure processing. that we've built for one particular workload to get at a small piece of data very, very quickly actually becomes counterproductive with Absolutely. a very oh, different workload. And, and so the, the next problem is, and this is even a bigger issue, is if you build those structures, so in conventional systems, you use techniques like indexing, caching, by putting data, pinning it into caches, um, partitioning, you create sort of a notion of grain of the data. So you know in advance how you're going to traverse it and you can tune that environment to traverse it that way. But with analytics and, and true analytics, you don't know how you're going to traverse the data. You're going to cut it lots of different ways and in high volume. And so the fact that A, you have so much data that you can't create those structures and, and sort of manage them, but also you don't want to create a sense of grain so that it's very fast one way, but, but it, slow to the same magnitude in the opposite direction. So right. you don't want those overhead structures. You need something, and this is sort of the notion of scanning. And that's what our architecture, that's what other architectures do absolutely, is you want to be able to as quickly possible scan and sort of ingest a 
a huge volume of that data as fast and do that in parallel. Right, okay. So c can you talk a little bit about, you've been looking at the Natiz of architecture quite deeply. Right. Um, and I know you come from a very strong OLTP background as well. Can you talk a little bit about what strikes you about the Natizu architecture and this um, concept of the analytic workload? Right, so, so the first thing I'll say that I've been most amazed about since getting intimately involved using and acquainted with Natiza is how easy it is to use. And so we've heard the simplicity thing, I'll leave that alone for now, but that's, I don't want anybody to lose sight of you don't have to have so much technical expertise and you don't have to tailor the system to be able to, to sort of leverage its power. And, and the business value there is accessibility. People can get at the data oh, and when, and, when and how they need Absolutely. to. Absolutely, and right. it's, it's, you, you've reduced the, the human variability, the human cost, and the human complexity. It's, you don't eliminate that, but you've reduced it substantially. But, but back to your sort of original question, how the architecture works, it's, it's very different in that it takes a workload, so it looks like a very simple system to the end user. And then the host, you know, sort of the front end structure, subdivides whatever the statement is at the time that you're processing into a discrete step, set of steps, and that's optimization like any, op, uh, like any yeah. database engine does. Yeah. But one of the things that's, that's really impressive here is rather than send down a sort of a general purpose set of instructions to each node for them to apply discretion or for them to wade through a huge optimization code path, it creates this very, very tight, compact instruction set, um, which it passes down. It's actually, I believe it's C code, I'm not sure. Yeah. But, but that architecture is fundamentally different in how it breaks it into those discrete pieces. It creates the instructions and shoots them down to all the blades and they execute in parallel. So, so that aspect is very impressive. In the shared nothing architecture, where the data streams from the disk right to the FPGA, um, sort of in a, in a dedicated channel, and then the FPGA goes to work doing its magic right. to inflate the data, project, restrict, apply some basic functionality, and then send it across a short wire to its partner CPU. That is a very elegant, simple architecture. Right. And it really and that, performs and that's what beautifully. We want. Excellent. Right. Thank yeah. you very much, Alan. That was, so there is, uh, I think, a really uh, insightful look at two different workloads and how Natiza's architects have really optimized the Natiza appliance to manage the analytic workload. Thank you very much.